Hi, I'm Jasmine Burton, and welcome to The Ask, where we turn questions into answers. Today, we have a treat for you because I am speaking with Chef Tanya Holland. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> and we are so excited to talk about food. When people think about food, they mostly think of it as flavor, but it's so much more than that. It heals. It bridges cultures. It can be used as medicine. And so I feel like we have the perfect person to speak with us today. Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to The Ask. Oh, um, it's great to be here. Yeah. Thank you. And before we get into the issues, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that both Chef Holland and I are UVA alum. I know. How crazy. I graduated a few years ahead of you. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> exactly. Um, but while you were there, you actually got a BA in Russian or Slavic languages. Yep. In um, literature. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you also have another one, which I'm going to need help pronouncing uh, it as My well. My color degree is a Grand Diplôme, yes. and it's from La Varenne Ecole de Cuisine, so it's a cooking school that was in Burgundy, France. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've, yeah. Never been. I've been to Paris oh, to once. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, the, and I tell people, I mean, I love Paris. It's the most amazing city. But when you get in the countryside, you really understand the French culture, yeah. and it's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, a lot of like medieval architecture, and it just, yeah, it's interesting. And how has that classical training that you've had, both at UVA and both in France, prepared you to be a chef? Uh, it's prepared me quite well in terms of, you know, when you have, go to university, you have to, like, create your own schedule and discipline and focus and, um, you know, just having a very diverse background of studies. So I ended up in Russian literature. I started, like, with pre-engineering courses. I took some economics. I took some art history. So, um, you know, I had all these interests. And then as a restaurateur, you have to wear so many hats. Yeah. And so it really, I'm able to use all those. I select the art for my restaurant. You know, I'm doing the, um, the HR. I'm helping with design. I'm cooking food. I'm organizing the kitchen. Wow. I'm creating a business plan. So all those skills add up. And then with the uh, formal French training, even though my parents are from the South, and the, so the food I cook is based on soul food and Southern food, I bring more of the uh, classic French techniques to my yeah. cooking. And uh, that sensibility, I mean, that, that culture, just like, you know, a lot of that part of Western Europe was the original farm-to-table area. Yeah. So just knowing, like, that your vegetables come from a few feet away and working with that was really great training. To understand the difference in flavor between yeah. a vegetable that hasn't traveled, you know, across the world to right. get to you or any kind of uh, ingredient. We, so... I didn't even know that that was a distinction or difference. What's the difference between a vegetable that's traveled across the world to one that's just, you know, potentially gotten where we're at? Well, you can taste it. Like wow. the freshness, um, if it hasn't been refrigerated, mm -hmm. if it hasn't been like sitting in a crate for weeks, you know, I mean, the closer you get to actually pulling it out of the ground and putting it in your mouth, the better it's going to taste. You're expanding my horizons because I just go to Whole Foods and think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> And they're good at making you think that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah. You mentioned go to farmers markets. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I do go to farmers okay. markets sometimes, so okay. I do do that. Yeah. And sometimes I get other things outside of food, like homemade deodorant and soap bars, and I feel yeah. like I'm really like connected with the nature. Yeah, so, why not? Um, when we were just talking, you were also talking about the fact that not only are you a chef, but you do the HR, you pick you know, the menus, you pick the art, you do everything. Um, and I, when I think of you, I think of how I learned about you, which was on Selena and Chef. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I've watched every single season of that. Oh, yeah, And also Top show. Chef as well. Yeah. But there's so many other things that go into running a restaurant yeah. um, outside of just being a chef. And walk me, walk me through all of that. Oh, wow. I mean, and there's so many different ways to, like, approach it and enter the business. I mean, I started in the front of the house, so... In college, I was waiting tables. That's kind of where I started falling in love with the business, uh, just to have some extra money. And then I, <clears throat> when I left, went to New York City, I became like an assistant manager. I took some cooking and wine classes there, so I learned about wine. Mm -hmm. um, I actually was an assistant to a food stylist who was styling food for magazines and TV shoots, so you learn about presenting your food on the plate. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have kind of a creative you know, eye uh, besides a developed palette. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's all sorts of programs. I Because I went to university, I decided to just go to a cooking-focused um, school. But there are schools that actually teach you restaurant management classes as well. Mm -hmm. I learn from chefs I work for and then by doing. 
Um, but, you know, when you have an independently operated restaurant, say not like a chain, like a Friday's or a um, Cheesecake Factory or Ruth Chris's or something, you're, as an operator, you're doing all those things. You're doing your publicity, your marketing, your, you might be able to hire someone on your team to, to come on your team, but it's not guaranteed mm-hmm. because um, the margins are just really slow, uh, small. It's just one of those kind of businesses. Yeah. Um, takes a lot to run it. Um, so it's a labor of love. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of times the real estate deal really drives the success of a restaurant. Yeah. So the cost of real estate, but also like your location. Yeah. They always say location, location, location. But, you know, I had a restaurant that was way off the beaten track and became popular because there was nothing else around. So you, yeah. you never really know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's an interesting and, business. And you mentioned that it was a labor of love and you detail some of this some of this labor of love in your in your two books, which yeah. I, we did bring for you all today. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the first one is restaurant uh, recipes okay. from the restaurant, mm-hmm. Brown Sugar Kitchen that I had for 15 years yeah. in Oakland. Um, and then there's some profiles of some regular customers. I had some very interesting regulars that came in. Some of them I worked with, like the people who printed all my artwork yeah. um, or feature. And then California Soul, which came out in 2022, is how California has influenced my cooking. I've been living in California now for 23 years wow. from uh, New York. And um, I also um, feature some makers, black makers from mm-hmm. California, like a beer maker, a, a date farmer, another um, small farmer, a coffee um, roaster, mm-hmm. et cetera. And then historical sidebars um, covering the migration of African-Americans from the South to California, yeah. uh, which my maternal side of the family, everybody migrated from Louisiana to California, mm-hmm. except for my grandparents. Yeah. So I got to spend summers in Louisiana with them. You know, as a California girl, I am happy to hear this because I feel like sometimes our cuisine is overlooked. Like when you think yes. of amazing food, you think of, you know, Atlanta or, yeah. you know, Louisiana, something by the bayou. No one really thinks of us. Yeah. And so I'm curious to know, really, how has— Especially the black contribution. Yes. Like you, you hear about these, you know, restaurants, the very farm to tables like Chez Panisse or— um, French Laundry, you yeah. know, high-end, Mediterranean diet, California yes. restaurants, right? Yes. But there's so much influence, and we have, like, Wally Amos, uh, his story, and, um, of course, uh, the Chicken and Waffles place, Blink, Blink and Roscoe's. Name, Roscoe's. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there's a lot that we brought with us to California. And, I love that. Yeah. And you had a restaurant you mentioned for 15 yes. years in California. Which is a good, a good run for it a restaurant. A um, you know, I tried to hang on there, but COVID just made it really challenging. Mm, COVID made it challenging for yeah. a lot of people. I, yes. I did get a chance to read the reviews for the restaurant before okay. we sat down. Thanks. And something that came up on more than one occasion was that people felt like it, the food made them feel like they had a home away from home. Yeah. Is that something that you wanted or that you were, you know, meticulous about ensuring that people experienced once they came to the restaurant? You know, it just like... It's funny how, I mean, things kind of happen. So I was shopping around. um, I was trying to open a restaurant called Patois. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like a French, you know, Creole bistro. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to open it downtown. I couldn't get a lease. So Mm -hmm. I ended up in West Oakland. The concept seemed too esoteric for West Oakland. Oakland. So I came up with the name Brown Shirt Kitchen. It was in this little diner space. And it just like the space kind of dictated like the warmth and the feel of it. But what I wanted people to feel is just, yeah, everybody's welcome. Yeah. So if that makes them feel at home, yes. And then it's always cooked with love. And I always have my book, Always Cook With Soul. Um, you know, and keeping everything really consistent, really caring for the product that I bring in. I mean, buying the best product possible is known for buying local, organic, and sustainable uh, ingredients whenever mm-hmm. possible. And that makes a difference, too. People are like, why does, you know, your fried chicken, like, taste so good? Well, I clean the oil every other day. You know, yeah. I use fresh flour right. and, like, and all that stuff adds up. You know, hormone-free chicken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems like you're also an expert and extremely meticulous about what goes into your body. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this concept, if I'm being honest, is relatively new to me. (laughs) I am getting better. Um, But it's relatively new, I think, to the Black community as a whole, about really caring about what we ingest, what goes into our body, and the fact that what we put in our bodies can influence our health and all of those things. I'm so glad you said that because I really want to get people off the colonizer diet. You know, like, it's just all this processed food— you know, in the fast food, it's yeah. just like, 
it's not good for us, you know, and, you know, sustainability. I've been doing that work with the James Beard Foundation, uh, with No Kid Hungry. We go to the schools and we make sure that the kids have healthy breakfasts to start their day. It affects their neurodevelopment, everything, you know, it's just, it, yeah, we, that's a big passion of mine. And now that I don't have the restaurant, I can focus a little bit more on that. But yeah, I mean, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. Yeah. And it's amazing that you get to focus on it because there are so many things that could potentially change in our community if we cared more about those things. Yeah. Um, and pressure, honestly, yeah. it's how we started. Yeah. You know, our grandparents, great grandparents, I mean, they they farm their own vegetables. Yeah. They it, And, you know, so we got to get back We're to that. We're getting back to our roots, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it, it could change so many things that affect our community, whether that yes. be blood pressure, cholesterol, hypertension, absolutely. diabetes. Diabetes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, all those sodas. So that's one thing I was able to do in Oakland was to help uh, them lobby for a tax on sugary sodas. So there would oh, be wow. less sodas um, um, sold in the corner stores to the kids. So it was great. I mean, it just makes a difference. Yeah. Well, I hope outside of restaurant tour, you also have activist and policy yeah. influencer in your bio as well. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, and that's like just kind of happened, but I really enjoy it. Like I never knew that this would lead me into, uh, you know, that direction, but it's really rewarding. And to be able to use my platform to impact and affect change, uh, you know, especially that's positive, that lifts our community up and empowers our community, um, that's, it's great. And so I'm, that's something I really want to continue to do. Yeah, I mean, getting off the colonizer diet is one of the greatest things I've ever heard in my lifetime. I'm like, I hope you coined that phrase. Sure, maybe I should, huh? That is, that is amazing. Maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's the title of your next yeah, book. Maybe. Okay, yeah. for those listening here, that is off limits. Right, no, right, right, right. That. And as I said the other day, like, I, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, but we got to retire the red solo cups for the culture. I know oh, it's wow. like, let's get you, let's start drinking out of some compostable cups, you know, that are okay. clear because they're not sustainable. And they're like, all that plastic is ruining our, ruining the environment, you know? That's a hot take. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Like the red solo cup, I feel like is a moment in history, but, yeah, but what's going to replace it? No, well, the clear compostable cups, Okay. the green writing on the, on the side, it's, you know. It's better than nothing. Okay. Or every, have everybody bring their reusable, like, Yeti or what's that other brand, you know, cork sickle. Okay. You know. When you see me getting bottle service in a reusable Yeti, don't ask me any questions. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, food as a medicine. I'm curious to know when you really tapped into that being something that you were interested in. Well, that's also kind of happened accidentally um, because I had... Uh, planned to have some surgery and I saw this Ayurvedic doctor and they said, you know, after surgery, try this cold diet. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a list. It was like fish and vegetables. So like, like no red meat and, um, you know, no refined sugars, no carbohydrates. And I healed so quickly like my Western medicine doctor was like, what's going on? And my parents, wow. like I got up and I walked around like, cause it just like healed my digestive system. It was easy on my digestive system. Let's take, uh, put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then allowed the rest of my body to focus on healing. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it. And, you know, again, I mean, for living in Northern California, it's like, it's sort of ingrained in part of the community there. And it's really, um, yeah, I just seen what a difference it makes. I mean, I think that, you know, vegetarianism and veganism, if it works for you, it's great. But like, I like protein, but I need to know where my protein is. And again, when you source well, um, you generally, you know, have better health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the health outcomes piece is just so fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, really because I've seen the effects that it could have probably on my own family um, and on so many people we love as well. Yeah. And when you think about changing your health, you think of, you know, a million things you could be doing differently, but really it could be something as simple as greens in the morning. Exactly. Or, you know, I saw you brought yes. a green <laughs> juice to get, with I have little packs of green stuff because I'm on the move and, um, yeah. you know, green powders that you can add to your water because got to get them in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to get them in. And I am, I'm embarrassed to say this before I get to my last question, but what would your reaction be if I told you that sometimes my guilty pleasure is McDonald's? 
I mean, obviously, I have some guilty pleasures, too. It's all good, you know? Um, song's not a regular thing. I get it. I mean, it's a very particular taste. And, yes. you know, we have sensory memories. We have tastes that we love in comfort food, and it could come in uh, different ways. So I'm not going to judge you on that, you you're know? So, you're so right about and comfort food. And it's just to, like, 90%. It may be eight, 85 to 90% if you're doing, like, healthy and then, you know, it you have is, your cheat days. I think you're so right about it. The sensory memory aspect about food can trigger memories. It can trigger memories yeah. of your childhood. Yeah. It can trigger memories of moments happiness. Of happiness. Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. McDonald's for me reminds me of when me and my dad used to sneak <laughs> out of the house when my mom wasn't looking and he would help me go get french fries. I, I mean, I took, when I was taking swimming lessons when I was little, like, that was a treat. At the end of the swimming yeah. lesson, was like McDonald's. Right, So, right. you know, I mean— I, <laughs> Haven't had any lately, but <laughs> definitely have had um, my life. Yeah. I love that. Before I ask you the last question, I just want to know if there's anything that I missed, anything that you want our listeners and viewers to know about food, what they can be doing in their life as they determine what they want to eat, or maybe that even people want to start their own restaurant. What should they know? Yeah. There, I mean, there's so much. I could go on forever, but, um, you know, I think... I really want to encourage people to support their community restaurants or community businesses because uh, small businesses are really what creates community cities and um, it gives people an opportunity to, you know, it's entrepreneurship. Right. So starting your own business is a big thing and it's really challenging. Yeah. Um, and, you know, shop locally, shop at your farmer's markets. Mm. Um uh, you know, just understand that also, like, restaurants are, you know, there's most of them, and for now, until we get way into robots and AI, are human operations. So have some forgiveness, you know, right. it's like coming out a little slow. And, yeah. you know, our goal is to be as consistent as possible. And uh, that's a good sign of a restaurant if you go there and then six months later, your meal is like just as good. But, yeah. you know, when you have that variation, it's like, oh, something's going on. Did they get a new chef? Did yeah. they get, you know, yeah. so that consistency is really important. Um yeah, I think I think that's it. You know, visit my website, tanyaholland.com, follow me on Instagram and um I'm just gonna keep trying to do what I'm doing. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you keep doing what you're doing. I'm inspired. I know our <laughs> listeners you. are gonna be inspired. Thank um you. I usually end our episode with an ask, but I think you just you just gave it. Shop Did I? locally. Yeah, oh, okay, shop good, locally. Good, good. Yeah. Um support local businesses, go to your farmers market. Yeah. Care about what you put in your body. I think I think we covered it. Anything else? Excellent. <laughs> Uh, I can't think of anything right okay. now. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what I got going, going on there. Um, I do a lot of events and travel. Uh, so I take, uh, you know, home cooks on culinary trips. I just did one in Lisbon. Wow. So if you're interested in traveling and learning more about food and culture, that's another, um, new, uh, chapter in my okay. career that I'm exploring now that I don't have the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Well, we are staying tuned for your evolving career. And we <laughs> yeah. also appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. It's and to my our pleasure. Yes. Thank I'm you. happy you came. Thank you. Um, and to our listeners, I hope you do everything that Chef Holland said um, <laughs> and watch all of her stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in.